Welcome to this YouTube channel. My name is Jeroboam Kimtai. This evening is a blessed evening. I am with Bishop Michael <laughs> Odiambo Opio. Opio. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kenyans and everyone in the world, it is because of Christ that I came to know about this powerful man of God. It is because of salvation that I knew about him. Now, it has, it has been a long journey going to, since 2005, we can do the mathematics. It's a long time. And God has nothing that he does without a purpose. God does everything with a purpose. And this evening, we are today seated here. We didn't know that it would reach this time, but thank God because of technology and everything. Now, I want to talk to Kenyans together with Bishop today, mm -hmm. and especially in this time of where we are preparing for elections. Uh, it's quite something. Mm -hmm. You know, people try to separate at times like this. Mm -hmm. But as Christians, having spiritual fathers like Michael here, Michael Opio, mm -hmm. I know things will not go astray if we maintain the peace with our God. And so before we talk about elections, I wanted us to, I want him to, to, to talk to us about what he was doing today in church briefly, because uh, you know the Spirit of God is, is so wonderful. Mm. He does things timely. Oh. And he has been sharing off before we went to the program about that thing, about dedication. And I feel as though he tells us about that because I know it's high time even Kenyans dedicated something to God wow. about uh, about elections. So welcome, Bishop. Yes. Take us through what was happening today in church wow. before we continue. Sorry, it's a bit, uh, man of God, it's a bit wide because uh, we dedicate this week to prayer. Mm -hmm. And we've been, prayer, been in prayer and fasting since Monday. And our theme for this prayer was dedication. Uh, it was open because we realized that there are many things that we are supposed to dedicate uh, to dedicate to God, and uh, so today uh, we were we were having a, a dedication service, mm -hmm. and uh, our theme mostly was on on Second Timothy uh, chapter number one and verse twelve, where Paul says that. Uh, uh, because of this, uh, I've, I've, I've suffered mm -hmm. all these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. That's what Paul was saying. Yes. For I know whom I've believed in. Amen. And I'm persuaded that uh, he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. So that word committed, mm -hmm. we, uh, we see that uh, from there we learn that God can only keep what you commit to him. Sure. Whatever you not commit to him, mm -hmm. God cannot keep because God cannot just come into things without you involving him. It is only the enemy that where, wherever he sees you've not uh, committed something to God, he takes it that automatically he is allowed to come in. Mm -hmm. And we realize that uh, many of us, even uh, Christians uh, and even uh, uh, people who say they're believers, we have uh, overlooked we have been so presumptuous, yes. assuming, we have been assuming that uh, once um, I'm a Christian and I pray, God will always be in charge. It does not happen like that. Mm -hmm. Paul tells us that God will keep only that which we commit to him. Amen. So if I don't commit my life to him, mm -hmm. God is not obliged to keep my life. Because the enemy also as a, as, as a way, as a leeway of coming because I'm like something that is open. Mm -hmm. So, for example, many people got married maybe in church, but they've never committed their marriage. to God. They've never dedicated their marriage that uh, this marriage, God, we put it in your hands. In your hands, yes. Yeah, so you... It, it, it belongs to you. You mm. guide us. Mm. Whatever comes in, Lord, handle it. Mm. They've never de done that, dedicated. Mm. Many people have started businesses. They never dedicated that business to God. Maybe they went and gave an offering and they didn't even know what why they were doing that mm -hmm. because the truth that you do not know cannot make you free. The Bible says if you abide in the word mm -hmm. and the word abides in you, that you are, you are a disciple indeed mm. and you will know the truth mm. and the truth shall make you Free. free. So the it truth, the truth that you do not, not know, know. Uh, cannot make you free. free. 
So you can pray because people are praying. You can give because it has been said, give. Mm. But unless you have a revelation behind that truth so that you are doing something out of revelation, then now it attracts what is supposed to attract mm. because you are doing things in something in knowledge. And we found out that many people, even believers, they are going along with things and they're wondering why they have problems in their marriages, they have problems in their families, they have problems in their health, they have problems. I'm not saying problems will not come, mm. but if you intentionally dedicated that particular aspect to God, God. you are sure that you will come out as a victor. Amen. Because God cannot lose any battle. <laughs> so today we were just doing, we were retracing our steps. Okay. We also touched a bit on Hosea chapter number 6 and verse 1 mm. that says, come let us return to the Lord for he has torn and will bind us. He has smitten and he will heal us. After two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up. It only happens when we return. So we say, a dedication is a return to the Lord. Mm. Yes. Yes. And so when we return to the Lord, we, we take matters seriously. Mm. We touched a bit on uh, also on, uh, on, on Cain and Abel. Abel, yes. And uh, in Genesis chapter number four. And the Bible tells us that after a period of time, Cain brought the the fruit of the field mm, before the Lord for the Lord and 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 and, and Abel also brought the firstlings the of his flock uh -huh. before the Lord and Abel's offering was, was accepted, accepted. Uh -huh. and then we ask why was Cain's offering not accepted, accepted. Uh, why was Cain's offering not accepted and God said told him if you do good mm. will you not be accepted mm. it means he offered, but the, the motive, he was presumptuous. It was a, as, a, as an afterthought. It mm. was after a time mm. that now he brought his offering. But Abel did not wait after a time. Immediately he brought the first fruit. It was like he dedicated yeah, his flock to the Lord. Mm. Because God always wants a first place in our lives. In our lives so when, when we give God first place in our marriage, immediately we get married, we give our marriage to the Lord. Mm. Then that's a marriage that's dedicated. When you start a business, you give a, you go and dedicate it before the Lord. Mm. And there is a way in which we do that dedication. We can learn from the scriptures. We're not going to that because yes, I believe yes, yes. that's not the real that's point, the real why point yeah. we are discussing today. So I, but because you told me to touch a bit that, on yeah, what bit we had. Hmm. Yes. So I, I asked you to touch a bit because you have been doing a rededication. Yes. That this leads me to what we need to do as Kenyans. Mm -hmm. I just feel like we need also to do a rededication of the whole nation to God. So, uh, how can we do that as Kenyans knowing that we are not uh, we are not we don't belong to the same uh, especially religion, mm -hmm. okay? Others do not know even God. They have not been give, they have not given their lives to Christ. So, as a nation as we say we need to rededicate our nation. As Christians, as men of God, can we do it and then it it it, it protects everybody wholesome including those who do not know the Lord? Mm, it is possible. Okay. We learn by history. All right. And the best history is the Bible. Mm -hmm. Because Bible, the Bible has stories of things that happened. And they literally happened. Okay. Mostly like in the in the Old Testament. You see, when uh, when the children of Israel rebelled against God, mm. God always raised another nation to use as a rod to punish them and to bring them back in line. And there was a time when the children of Israel rebelled. Mm. And God raised a prophet called Jeremiah. And Jeremiah warned the people that uh, what's happening is uh, God is tired with what's going on. And mm. so you are going to captivity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You are going to captivity. But uh, if, you, if you repent and change, God is going to return you back to your land after 60 years. Mm. God is going to take you out mm -hmm. so that the land might find rest. For oh, sure. And many... Many prophets rose and said Jeremiah was a liar because it was like Jeremiah was going against the grain. Mm. They did not believe that, uh, that uh, Judah could go into captivity because the temple was in Judah. And the temple was built and was dedicated and God said that uh, I've loved this place and I've chosen my place, this place to be my dwelling place among my people mm. and my heart will be here perpetually. So they believe God cannot live. They believed so. God cannot leave. No matter there was what. no way God can leave Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. 
So they were saying Jeremiah was a false prophet. <laughs> but Jeremiah told them, surely you are going to captivity. Yeah, you are going to captivity. But there is something that's connected with what you are saying about praying for the nation. Yes. Some believe that if they go, they'll come back immediately. God will redeem them. Jeremiah told them, no, you are going there for a long time. A long time. Yeah. So when you go there, give your daughters to marriage. Mm -hmm. Make your daughters marry. Mm -hmm. Raise businesses. <laughs> pray for the prosperity of that city. For yes. if it prospers, you shall prosper. prosper. Mm -hmm. Now, my cue that they are being taken as captives. <laughs> and they are being taken to a foreign land far away from home. Yes. But Jeremiah is telling them, you as the people of God, you can control the political environment of that land. Mm. So the church has the power to control the temperature and the environment of any nation if they pray. If they pray. If they pray. Okay, they were in a foreign land. Yes. But they were in, in a position to control everything in that land, including the political temperature. Even the political temperature. In a foreign land. In a foreign land. Okay. Now, if that can happen in a foreign land, what about in the land where God has raised you to be? Exactly. Okay. okay. He's saying, okay. you see, when there is peace in the land, you love peace. Mm. When there is tranquility in the land, you will enjoy tranquility. If there is no peace in the land, even you, you will suffer, although you are believers. Mm. So like now in our nation, if we don't pray that we have peace, if there is if there is riots and there is economic breakdown, even the believers suffer. suffer. Because they were the ones who were supposed to stand in the gap. Because mm. the person that can make there to be peace and things to go well is God. And God desires that. But here's the catch. The catch, uh -huh. God, without you, God cannot do it. God will not do it. Without, without me, God, you cannot do it. But without God, I you cannot. cannot. I cannot. And do without it. you, God will not. And without me, again, God will not. God will not. Okay. That's what the Bible says. For with God, all things not to God. Okay. With for with, with God, God uh -huh. all things are possible. are possible. God said, "I sought for a man to stand in the gap that I may not destroy the city, and I didn't find." So I had to destroy. Uh, God did not want to destroy, but he needed a, a man, man to stand in the gap. Yes. That's prayer. Prayer. He needed somebody to pray for to the land. Pray Just for to the say, land. God, please have mercy. Mm. And then he'll say, You've wronged, mm. but I'll not punish you mm. because somebody asked me not to punish you. Yeah, he prayed. So we believers, Christians, Christians can stand in the gap mm. and then can and can make sure. That this land will have peace, mm. whatever the outcome of the election that is forthcoming. Yes. Because right now everybody has an opinion, mm. but the person that knows who is going to be our next leader is in this land is it's God. God. Yes. Because the Bible says God is one that lifts up one and brings down another. 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 We may desire because we are people. Everybody has someone that he desires to lead, but in the end, it is mm. God. We are told the Bible says many are the plans of a man, mm -hmm. but the purposes of God that prevail. Amen. And also, I'd like to remind people mm. that every leader comes from God, whether they are evil or they are good. Mm -hmm. Because God always gives people leaders, not the leaders they want. We may want. God mm. gives people the leaders that they deserve. deserve okay. So, as a nation, let's look at us. Our spiritual condition, what kind of leader do we deserve? That's the one that God will give us. Yes. So when God gives us a leader, mm -hmm. we have to lift them to God. We, we have, have to, to pray them. to God. Mm -hmm. But before he gives us that leader, mm -hmm. we have to pray for the leaders that are there now. now. So that we can raise the right environment. Mm -hmm. And we can also take this time to, to, to confess and intercede for the sin of the land mm -hmm. as believers. So the procedure is, before we think about the leaders who we are expecting mm -hmm. to come and sit, mm -hmm. take over power, mm -hmm. we need to pray for the leaders who are there now. now. That will help us to set a good environment. Across the board, mm -hmm. we across need to board. pray for the, our president. Uh -huh. We need pray, to pray for the deputy president. president uh -huh. We pray for the govern for their government. Mm -hmm. We pray for all the departmental heads, and we pray for the CSS. Mm -hmm. We pray for the government. For the government. We pray that there may be justice in the land, mm -hmm. because God is a God of justice, justice and righteousness. But if we love unrighteousness, then God can give us an unrighteous ruler. Mm -hmm. Because God lets us have the, the leader that we deserve, not the one. God, in, in fact, uh, Brother Jeroboam, God is so interesting. Mm. 
God is always on the side of his word. Not on the side of anybody. Mm -hmm. You remember in Jericho, mm -hmm. Joshua had crossed over. And this Joshua, he meets a man. And this man is military fatigue and has a sword already drawn. Mm -hmm. You mean a, a drawn sword yes. is, is an act of readiness for war. For war, yes. But when Joshua looks, this is not like a Canaanite. Mm -hmm. But he's not a Jew. Mm -hmm. So somehow he thinks... This is not a man from Jericho. Mm. This is not a man from Cana. Mm. But he's not also not a Jew. So Joshua asks, who are you? Mm. And whose side are you, are on? you on? Are you on our side or are you on the side of the enemy? And the answer is, neither. I'm neither on your side or on, on their the side. side the but enemy. I've come down as a captain of the armies of the Lord. It means I am on the side of those who are standing with God. So God is always on the side of mm. those who are seeking just and righteousness. Yes. Yes. And, yes, yes. And, and, and immediately Joshua knew that he was standing before the Lord God. Mm. He removed his shoes mm -hmm. and he knelt down. down. We know what happened, how they took Jericho. Mm. Jericho, they, they did not fight. Mm -hmm. God was fighting for them. For them. From Jericho, the next town was I. Mm. I was a very small town, very insignificant. What happened before I? They were beaten. Why? Because they are taken their cars thing. So God is on that other side. So God is always <laughs> on any side. <laughs> sure. <laughs> on the second battle, God was fighting on the side of I. Uh, so God can fight against you, whoever you are. Uh -huh. So there's no way you can monopolize God and say, uh, we are of God, they are of the devil. No. You, 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 might, you could wonder. Mm. No, God is not on, God did not come to take sides. God does not come to take sides. sides yes. God comes to take over. Over. God does not come to take sides. So God comes so to take us over. Yes. As a church. Mm, as a church now. We are not supposed to take sides. And if you take sides, that is a personal thing with you and your one single vote. Vote. It is supposed to be a secret. Don't that, even talk about it. That's you and your one vote. Mm. Yeah. Because immediately if you take sides, automatically you will hate or resent the other side. Exactly. And God calls us for love. Hey. <laughs> yeah, this is God a cross. Uh, this actually is a crossroad. God has called us for love. for love. So immediately you take side and start talking on sides, automatically you'll hate the other side. Mm -hmm. And God loves the other side. Yeah. God loves both, both sides. Mm. Actually, he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> you brought it up. God loves both sides. Yeah. And he is watching. Yeah. So Okay. Now, how do, are we supposed to receive things? Because it is a competing thing now mm. as a Christian. Let us conclude at that level. Yeah. Elections are coming on the 9th of August. Okay. This is for Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Now, as Christians, we shall vote. We will not just pray. Mm -hmm. We have a vote. We'll also we, vote. We'll also vote. So as you vote, you will not, you will not vote for many. You will vote for only one. one. Mm -hmm. Now, how do, are we supposed to behave after voting? After voting, because the outcome will come and it may be against or first of all, form. first of all, before voting, mm -hmm. we are supposed to pray. Pray. So that, uh, uh, you know, voting is a civil right. Mm. And Kenya is not a monarchy. Mm. Uh, how I wish Kenya was a theocracy, but it's not a theocracy. theocracy. Kenya is a democratic republic. Democratic, yes. Where the majority have their way and, and the, the minority have their say. say. Okay, yes. But uh, first, we, ma we should pray. Mm. One, that there may be peace. Peace. Mm. As we go towards the poll. Yes. We should pray that as the campaigns continue, there may be decorum. Yes. And uh, you know, leaders shape the mindset of the people. So mm. when leaders shout and call each other names, then people end up shouting and calling each other names. names. So the church is supposed to be the sober voice. But okay. now, when the church takes side, there's no way they can be a sober voice. Mm. It becomes very tricky. Yes. Uh, and I don't know when they say the church has taken sides because uh, who is the church? Who is the church? Jesus mm -hmm. said, I will build my church mm. and the gates of hell shall not prevail. prevail yeah. So the church may be the church within the church because mm. the church is within Christendom and the entire Christendom calls themselves church. There is church and there is Christendom. Mm. The entire Christendom, they call themselves church. Church. Mm. But God knows who church is. Okay. What the scripture says, the foundation of God stands sure. It is a seal. The Lord knows them that are his. his. 
but everybody says we are the church. <laughs> so there are many who are saying the church is saying this is the position of the church, and God is wondering who are these people. I don't even know them. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the position of the church. Okay. Yeah. According to them. Because everybody feels I'm the church. Then mm. one is not the church. When mm. I speak the church, I've spoken. The church according to who? <laughs> and which church? <laughs> so it's a bit tricky. Yes. But uh, we have to pray. We against uh, negative incitements. Negative in incitements. Because mm -hmm. leaders, because they want votes, they can smear each other. Mm. They are politicians. Yes. Many of them are not even born again. Mm. They call themselves Christians, but uh, many of them are not born again. Mm. Some are born again, yes, but born again in quotes. in quotes. So we don't know. God is the one who knows, so we cannot judge. judge sure. So we ought to pray. We ought to uh, to pray that there may be peace. Mm. We ought to pray that the election may be fair. Fair, yes. Because God is a God of justice. Mm. That the election be fair. Mm. Uh, we have to pray that uh, after election after election now uh -huh. god gives people the grace to accept the outcome mm. because whoever becomes president god will not change mm. he'll still be god he'll still be god and yes. he's still on the throne yes you will not elect him <laughs> at any time <laughs> he's not running he's not running nobody's against him <laughs> god <laughs> he, is yeah, god. he is god so as long as he's on the throne it doesn't matter who comes to the throne. Mm. The remnant, the church, mm. God will take care of them. Sure. But uh, as spiritual leaders, mm. let us guide people. Let us not excite people emotionally, excessively, either because of party affiliations mm. or because of uh, tribal affiliations. Personally, I've been voting since 1992. Okay. I've been voting consistently. Consistently, mm. I've been voting. Mm. I've been fulfilling my civic, uh, civil right. Civil right, yes. I've never attended a political rally, rally. in my life. Mm -hmm. I don't know what political rally is. I've never taken five shillings from a politician. So yes. I don't vote because I was given. Mm. I don't vote because of tribe. Yes. I vote with my conscience mm. and I go vote prayerfully. prayerfully. And I think this is the direction as church leaders we are supposed to get the people. Let's not emotionally over over ch ch charge the people too much emotionally. Mm. But let's ask them to pray and vote with their conscience mm -hmm. and not feel condemned. Yes. Because it's just an, a, a one-day exercise, mm. and you have not sinned for voting by any to, for anybody. Yes. There's no sin by voting for anybody. Mm. And after the voting, you go home, we wait for results. Mm. A government that comes in, we are begging mm. back on our knees, yes. praying yes. for the prosperity of the land. For it, if it prospers, uh, we, prosper. we prosper. But above all, we also pray that God may give us good leaders. The good leader is not the one you think you want. Mm. Because you pray for a good leader, God may surprise you. Yes. Let's pray that God gives us good leaders. Yes. For righteousness, exalt a nation. Mm -hmm. So we may be emotionally inclined in a certain way that because of our ethnicity or whatever. But uh, in the end, if we get a good leader, all people will, will find good. Mm. If we get a bad leader, everybody will will suffer. Hey, sure. Yes, so Lord. we get a good lead, leader, everybody will prosper. We get a good, a bad leader, everybody will suffer. Yeah. And the ball is with the church. Yes. You know, uh, we have the contestants in Kenya. Mm -hmm. People want to, everybody wants you to vote in their favor. Yes. But actually we'll, we'll vote for one person. But before we go to the vote, we need to take a position as a church and pray. And we need to stand in the position of God. Mm -hmm. Who God will bring is the one that we will accept. Remember, you are praying. And mm -hmm. so the one that God will allow to be a leader will be an answered prayer. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we don't need to, to be agitated in any way because of what will come out of this voting that is about to come. It's only five years. Another thing will come like this again. But what remains is we need, after voting, to pray for our land yes. after voting. So prayer does not stop before voting 
after voting, we'd continue praying for our land. And everything is at the hands of the church. And the church is supposed to take a neutral position when it comes to such a like season. And so thank you because of this program. Mm. And before we close it up, let me say what I always say. Subscribing helps. Subscribing spreads. Wow. So subscribe uh, after watching and then like and share to friends, especially Kenyans. And the people who will watch this uh, broadcast, even abroad, pray for Kenya because we are part of this world. Mm. And uh, I know that when Kenya prospers, everybody will prosper out there. What you don't have, we have. What we don't have, you have out there. So we need to coexist. So pray with us. It is not a Kenyan thing. Kenya even stands with many nations I know very well in peacekeeping and very very many things. We Kenyans pray for other nations, so continue even praying. In, with even Kenya. in hosting refugees, exactly. Kenya, Kenya mm. is a is is a land that has opened their borders. Yes, for many people, mm. there are people from almost almost every nation, every of, nation. of the world yes. here in Kenya. Here in Kenya, and they are residing peacefully. Peacefully, there is no kind of phobia. Yeah. There is no persecution. Yes, people move freely. Uh. Nobody uh, cares about uh, the other whether there is a foreigner or not. Uh. Any problem that is always in Kenya. Yeah. Kenya have problems among themselves. Yeah, among themselves, They're just among themselves. Yeah, another one was telling me <laughs> we, we just hear Kenya this post-election violence, but we cannot take our aeroplanes and go because we know no. Kenyan touches a foreigner, even in post-election or something. Mm -hmm. Be it post-election, speech, I don't know, because we don't really fight. Mm -hmm. We have tension and everything. I was talking to another Ethiopia, South, uh, South Sudanese young girl. I was telling her, now that you talk this good Swahili, will you go back to South Sudan? She told me I will not go. Wow. Kenya is my land and Kenya I love it so land. much. Wow. And even our nation cannot offer the peace you offer here. You know, when the government offers peace, it is accredited, it is, uh, it is attributed to all of the Kenyans. Mm -hmm. So we need to have a big part ah. to play. So, oh, so thank you, thank you, and, and thank you once Amen. more. Now, we have said about prayer. Can you say a short prayer as mm. we close? Okay. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, through the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, thank you for this time and this opportunity that we have uh, sat here and uh, deliberated, uh, particularly towards the election that is forthcoming in our land, Kenya. Lord, now I pray for this land. I pray for the citizens of this land. Yes, Lord. I pray, Lord, against the spirit of uh, negative agitation, race agitation, class agitation, uh, ethnic agitation, uh, party agitation, O oh Lord, that people, your people may know, the people of this land may know that, Lord, election is just an event, and after that, life must continue. And our hope, our prosperity is not in the politicians, in as, in as much as they promise a lot. Mm. Our prosperity is in you, Lord. So we pray, may you prosper our land. May you give us peace, Lord. May you give us cohesion. And uh, may you give us equity as a people, that we may find the right, even the right environment to continue to serve you and to proclaim the message. Bless the, the viewer that is viewing right now, wherever they are. And Lord, may you give them a point to reflect upon, even as the days of the general election in Kenya is drawing nearer and nearer. Above all, we will celebrate the leader that will give us, Lord, and sure. we'll pray for them. Mm -hmm. You know them even by now. Mm -hmm. So we commit them unto your hands. I pray for your grace upon them. I pray for peace during this electro electioneering campaigning period, Lord. I pray for the for the armed uh, 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 forces of Kenya. I pray for the police. Mm -hmm. I pray for the uh, interim. Uh, I pray for the independence uh, boundaries electoral commission, Lord. I pray for all organs that are connected to this election, Lord. May you take charge in those places, and may there be sobriety, and may the, may there be patriotism in our land, to the glory and honor of your name. For this I pray, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Bishop. You're welcome, Thank man you. of God. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, viewers, we love you and bye. Bye.